Okay. All right. So this is one of our yeast breaks. We have seven of them here because we go through them pretty quickly. Uh, standard 15 and a half gallons, half barrel kegs pretty much. Pour on bottom and a port on top. So it's our uh, uh, typical tri clamp. Yep. Yep. Four inch top, four and a half inch bottom. All of our brakes are, after they're used, they are opened up, rinsed out. They run through our comac line twice, which will do a caustic cycle, acid cycle, and we'll steam sterilize them. Just be cautious. I always like looking inside to make sure we actually got everything out of there. So, the first step is to degas. It's still it's pressurized, so don't want to open it up right away. Just a coupler, open end to it. Always just spray down. Already degassed. That's not good. Oh, so that, that's just a regular safety yep. top on there. With the, with the big tri clamp that takes the whole top off. That's what makes it unique as a yeast break. Yes. So the whole top lifts right up. Ah, cool. This is the stem I was talking about. It does not quite hit the bottom of the keg. You see that? Yeah. So there's always going to be a little bit of iodine left over, a little bit of yeast left over, a little bit of beer left over. Four inch gasket. So I'll breathe this out, I'll inspect the stem, look for any sort of yeast or any sort of large dents or cracks or something. After I look at it, I would stick it in our sink full of iodine until I check everything else. And then I want to inspect inside the keg. So I get a flashlight out. Just a visual inspection. Yep. Just to make sure there's no yeast matter or protein matter or something that got stuck to the inside of the keg, they didn't get clean. Looks good. Uh, normally what I would do from here is I would get three ounces of iodine, put it in the keg, fill it all the way up with water. And let the whole thing just sit in that strong iodine solution for at least 15 minutes. It reassures that everything in there is sanitized and sterile, and we're going to be ready to add yeast to this, not add anything else to our beer in the end. Yeah. So I, I was concerned there because it's already gone through the whole uh, cleaning cycle, and now we just opened it up and exposed it to the air yep. to do the visual inspection. Yeah. But that's why you're now going to re sanitize it yep. with the iodine and, and let that sit in there. For sure. And we totally so. could just use the brakes off the sterilizer. I just feel better looking inside. Yep. That is strictly personal preference. Per personal preference. Yeah, I, it makes me sleep at night knowing I looked inside of this keg, or Megan looked inside the keg, and we know for sure that it is clean and there's nothing sticking to it, and we're we'll be good to go. Nothing beats a visual inspection. 100% agree. When, agree. when you got so much riding on it. Yeah. You figure the yeast from that, whether you're going to use it here, yep. or this is for someone to pick up. Sun King provides yeast to a lot of people around town. We do. I suppose you still do that. Yep. Um, so whether it's for you guys, uh, for in-house use, or you're providing it to someone else, they're going to pitch that into a big batch of beer. Yeah. And, you know, if there was something inside that keg, the whole, that whole batch could be lost. So yeah. a visual inspection is pretty important. Yeah. All, All right, right here. What? Uh, let's do the ATP swaps. Oh, yeah. Good. Let me grab one. Give me two seconds. We're right back. Okay. motto right there. Brew like a champion today. All right, perfect timing. Kevin's back. Alright, uh -huh. all right. 
What we got here, Kevin? Another great micro test. This is called a ATP luminometer. What it does, it measures ATP, which is the energy molecule found in all living organisms. So we're going to swab for anything that's in our environment. If it's living, this will tell us what's there in a relative concentration of it. So the step, we do, we do two tests here. This is our swab. We're going to open it up. I swab the inside of this plate. Just going to get all the way around. Would you normally do this, or are you just doing this as a demo? As a demo, but we'll spot check things every now and then. We're going to seal it off. The tube's down, the swab's down there. Up here, you can see a little bit of liquid. We're going to break the seal. The liquid will squeeze into the bottom of the tube now and react with anything that's on the swab. We'll shake it for 15 seconds. As we're doing that, we'll turn the meter on. And these, these tests, uh, I asked Kevin to demo this, so he's, he's doing it as part of the yeast brain uh, discussion here, but this is something you would do after cleaning a tank. Um, you're up inside the tank, it's been cleaned, it should be cleaned, should be sanitized, but this is a way to spot check that. It's a way to spot check your cleaning procedures. Um, and how much are, how expensive are these? So the meter itself is around 1200 bucks. Uh, we got ours through a, web suite, a supplier called Weber Scientific. They have a special where if you commit to buying two boxes of swabs, 100, 100 swabs in a box for a year, they give you the meter for free. Great deal. Uh, the swabs will last for two years, kept cold. So it's a pretty much no-brainer for us. Yeah, so not, not, a, yeah. not a bad deal. It's a great way to, to uh, check your cleanliness. Yes. All right, continue. Battery's dead. I'll be right back. We'll grab another one. Uh, okay. <laughs> They do take batteries, so we have to make sure that part is done properly. Yeast brink. I think it says yeast brink on here. Yeah, right there, yeast brink. These are very important. Every uh, commercial brewery has some of these. Uh, again, just sort of whether they're doing it in-house and collecting yeast for themselves to repitch or for sharing with uh, another brewery. This is a great way to get it in there. And we're, what we're going to talk about in just a moment is the scale. That's this uh, part over here. So we're going to do uh, yeast by uh, weight, not volume, that's what we talked about in the previous video. And uh, that scale is going to give us a reading as we start transferring good yeast into the brink. Full. We're going to open this top of it up for a swab in there. Is it okay? And I measure 15 seconds. And it gives a reading um, in RLUs, relative luminosity units. So the higher the number, the more compounds are in there. Below 10 is considered sterile. 11. So, <laughs> yeah, close enough. Close enough. Uh, I did open it up, so it's probably myself that messed with it. A fun experiment, too, is the time of a global pandemic. People wearing gloves. Gloves are great to protect your hands from outside elements, but gloves can still get dirty. So there's still things on gloves. For example, now you should be pretty clean. You've been in a been in a lab. You've been in a lab. You've been doing clean stuff all day. I spray my hands out nice propyl alcohol before we started the yeast stuff. So yep. these are, you would think these would be clean. We shouldn't see a lot. Probably have touched some doorknobs, maybe. Handles. Grabbing the brake itself. Uh, you grab my, my uh, pH. pH test strips, yep. Which has been hanging out in my brewery. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. 
2,985. Oh my god. What? Yeah. What? So just because you're wearing gloves does not mean you're sterile. It means your hands are sterile, your gloves are still full of stuff. Do not touch your face or anything else wearing gloves. It does no good. It just transfers the bacteria and yeast and organisms, viruses too, on your gloves to whatever else you touch. Wow. So, so what's a, that, that, that look compared to yep. uh, 10 or 11, which is considered uh, sterile, sterile. Yeah. What, how bad is that number? That's real bad. That's, That's real bad. Real bad. Yeah. Yeah. The peaks at 10,000 10, is pure colonies, pure, pure living things. So 30% uh, of my gloves are full of microorganisms right now. You think about that oh my way. God. It, it must be on my pH files. 100% is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's uh, you, it. You're going to blame me. All right. <laughs> so. Are you done with that scale? I am, yeah. Oh, actually, we didn't actually, talk about the scale, scale yet. Two seconds, two seconds. Two seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Almost done. Thank you. So, last step. Um, So we would do the runoff, mm -hmm. you know, like we did before, yep. unless we've already done that. Yep. Yeast is um, dead, it's done, we've done our cell counts, we know what we need. We've got a standard safety, safety coupler. Spray it down. This end here, Connects to the bottom of the tank. Gotcha. Open up the valves, open up the valves, and let it flow, let it fill up. Yeah, so we don't, we don't have to actually do that. We don't, yeah. Yeah, and so we always use the scale. This is just a rubber band floor scale, nothing fancy. Again, we do it by weight because volume's too hard. And we'll just weigh this out until we hit our 61.7 pounds, whatever it was, for that day. Right. The hip of a bring should hold about 120 pounds of yeast. Uh, so this is half full, that's perfect, and we're done. Got it. All right. Cool. Thank you.